All right, welcome to the 20th live stream of the Music Hack Space. And you just saw uh, the video of one of the instruments by, by SWAM. And this is a topic of, of today's live stream. And we are uh, with Lele Paravicini, who's based in Italy between uh, Milan and Lake Como in a, in a small, tiny village. Hello, Lele. Hello, JB. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. You're most welcome. It's a real pleasure to, to have you. Um, so you have uh, well started to doing physical models to, to create this, this wonderful instrument that we just heard. Uh, but you were not destined to do that. And, and I would love to, to hear more of the story uh, of, of you and Stefano. Stefano is not here, but uh, Stefano being the sound designer who, who has been on a quest since uh, 2003 to, to create uh, beautiful sounding software instruments. But, but for you, what was your journey and your trajectory? Yeah, uh, I, usually when we talk about our story, we usually are me and, and Stefano. So uh, Stefano usually starts from his point of view, but this time I want to, uh, to tell the story from my point of view. So I, I was uh, a web developer at that time, so it was uh, 2009. Um, so I was working for a company here in Milan and around Milan. Uh, but I was um, always, I have been always passionate of music and music technology. Uh, so I had uh, my own uh, website uh, where I published um, some pages about how to write uh, VST plugins uh, in Italian language. So because at the time all the resources were, were in, in English. So I decided to, to write everything in, in Italian on my website. And uh, I remember it was uh, 2009 and um, I received an email from Stefano Lucato, <laughs> uh, which, which is my buddy now. And uh, he was, um, he, he, he did found me because of this website, because I was the only uh, people that uh, published something about VS, how to make VST instruments in Italian. And, since he was not uh, so proficient in, in English, <laughs> he wanted to 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 have a, um, to meet a, a developer uh, that was I Italian, and uh, he was able to to make a, a, a VST instrument. Um, because he told me he, he was um, about to he had ideas to create a, a new technology. Uh, to make uh, uh, a good sounding uh, acoustic uh, uh, instrument. So, uh, at that time, he, he was working with uh, sample modeling on, um, on some libraries for contact, but uh, uh, already with some uh, advanced scripting uh, to morph the, the samples in real time so that uh, um, uh, to, to create uh, um, some good behavior for acoustic uh, instruments. Anyway, I was a, a web developer with, with passion of music technology, and when I received this 
uh, this email and he wanted to, to make something uh, with me about this new uh, proficient technology, I mean, I mean new way of making sounds, I, I was uh, really curious and I, was, uh, and I said, why not? So I started uh, with him in 2000, at the end of 2009 and uh, he was explain he explaining his idea and I helped him in, uh, in building the, the very first uh, prototype of uh, SWAM that is uh, an ac acronym for uh, Synchronous Wave Acoustic Modeling and uh, it is uh, a way to uh, morph uh, the small samples of an, uh, a solo instrument um, uh, so that it can be combined with the, some principle of physical modeling. So the, the very first technology, so the, the, the SWAM, uh, is not pure physical modeling but is a, a true hybrid between samples and physical modeling. Um, so, Wait, well, I, sorry, sorry, go on. No, 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 please. Um, well, we, we'll get into, into more details of this soon, but what I find very inspiring, and, and especially for, for, for our audience, our community of, of musicians and, and hackers, um, is that, uh, you know, a, a few weeks ago, we had Pat Scandalous, and who's here listening. Hello, Pat. Thank Hello. you for joining. <laughs> uh, who, who gave us a, a fantastic history of physical models. Uh, and if you mm -hmm. haven't seen... Uh, that 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 video you can you can find it on our YouTube page, um, and and Pat started in the in the eighties at uh, at Stanford at the historical uh, Karma Center started by John Chowning, and he, he had with him some of the the the, the most advanced researcher in physical models, and it was uh, going to be the big thing, which which it it didn't uh, become in the end, but. Um, What's interesting is that Stef Stefano, being a sound designer, a new uh, a web application developer, uh, on your own, you figured it out. And 10 years later, you, you gave a lecture at, at Stanford, at, at the Karma Center. And, and I think it's very inspiring for people who, who, who don't have that academic background also to think, well, I, I can actually do it myself. Uh, but I, I wonder what, what that journey was like, because you probably had a lot to discover as well of the intricacies of, of the physical models. Yeah, I have to, to say that uh, Stefano is a genius. <laughs> so <laughs> he has a, a very uh, beautiful mind. Uh, and uh, so the, um, what he has is that he is curious about how things work. So he studies on the internet and also myself now, but at the time he was studying on the internet uh, and I have to say that many resources, we have found many resources from the uh, Karma website, so <laughs> uh, also thanks to Julius Smith and uh, Pat and all the crew that uh, worked on physical models at the time. And uh, so we learned uh, by ourselves uh, about physical modeling. I have to say I, have, I, had, I joined those uh, sources with my knowledge because I, I am a um, um, in, uh, telecommunication engineer, so I have, I have studied uh, um, uh, here in Milan about uh, uh, engineering, so I, I have a, a solid uh, math and physics background, so uh, I could uh, use that background to help Stefano that was more um, intuitive, more um, uh, he used more the curiosity and the, uh, I, I don't know, the, uh, he tried to, fi to found, find uh, himself how to do things. So I helped him sometimes with uh, more math and physical knowledge. And together we, we have been able to, 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 to make such uh, progress. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, this is fantastic. This is great. This is exactly what why we exist in Music Hack Space to put together uh, passionate artists with a vision uh, of something, uh, along with engineers able to help them with their vision. So um, I, I hope it's inspiring to, to others. Um, I know you have prepared a few slides. Maybe uh, are those slides that are that come from the lectures you gave uh, at Stanford? 
Yeah, I just extracted some um, uh, some schemas. I prefer maybe to speak about that and uh, show just uh, some schemas that can be useful to understand. So great. Well, I'm going okay. to lead you to it then. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, I, I just give some ideas about SWAM. That uh, so the, the acronym is synchronous wave acoustic modeling, and as I said. And uh, the basic idea is that we sample uh, chromatically an instrument uh, on different la dynamic layers. Uh, but these samples are just, uh, uh, first are very dry, so in a quasi anechoic uh, room. So we don't, as in op opposite uh, from sample library that maybe they want also to um, to give to the to the composer to the user also the good reverb in a in a in a good room, let's say uh, we need very dry samples so that we can uh, process them and uh, morph sh uh, shape them in real time, and uh, also these samples are very short, so maximum two seconds or or less. Uh, in this way, um, we have several advantages. First is uh, the, um, the space that uh, on, on the hard drive, on the memory, is, uh, is very low. And uh, also the, uh, the musician, when he, he is about to record these samples, um, uh, can do it just in maybe one day without any... Uh, fatigue, fatigue <laughs> um, uh, any stress because it can it can reach uh, higher notes uh, uh, without a lack of breath, <laughs> for example. Um, what we do then is using these very short samples. We we use um, a technique that we we have uh, built to create uh, an infinite loop. Basically, infinite loop that um, uh, there is no loop point uh, audible. So usually, when you uh, when you make a loop on a, on a sample to to have a long sustain, uh, it's difficult to to not having um, a loop point, audible loop point. You our our brain. Can, can feel it, even if you use uh, uh, crossfades and so on, but uh, anyway, you can, you can hear. With, with our um, technique, you, uh, we are able to, to use a, a, a very uh, random um, uh, loop point uh, that is not audible by, by our ear. So, um, with all those samples, we create a structure that uh, we call the multi-vector wavetable. Uh, and we can um, basically uh, um, read this multi-vector wavetable in any point, in any multi-dimensional point. So passing from low, very low dynamic to high dynamic in, in, in a continuous way without artifacts, without uh, phasing uh, uh, artifacts. Uh, we can also pitch between different nodes, um, also without uh, artifacts and, and phasing problems. So in, with this technique, um, we can have a, a very coherent, a very um, uh, very good behavior of, of the sound without phasing artifacts. Uh, I can, I can uh, show, for example, on our saxophone that I'm running now on uh, uh, Camelot, that is also <laughs> another product that we are, we are making and um, for the live performance management, but we will have time to, to speak later. So this is uh, our saxophone, and if you can see, I'm using a breath controller, and uh, I can 
brief very 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 uh, low uh, and up to high dynamics uh, in a continuous way and uh, the engine behind is morphing uh, between uh, uh, the samples at very low dynamic to the samples at high, higher dynamic in a continuous way without uh, phasing uh, artifacts. Also, um, we can um, have a morphing between uh, adjacent nodes, uh, for example, uh, making realistic bending. Uh, again, with, without um, facing artifacts, be, be, because it's really a morphing between all the adjacent uh, semitones that we have sampled at the different uh, dynamic layers. And this, this is uh, basically a, a sample technique, but uh, it is combined with uh, physical modeling elements. For example, uh, overblow, if I activate the overblow, this um, whistle that we, we hear uh, is not sample. Uh, it comes from the from the some elements of physical modeling that uh, allows to to hear this whistle that is the same phenomena that um, uh, happened during the in, in the real things in the real instrument basically what is important to to note is that uh, uh, in a in an instrument like this one uh, we, we have to think uh, about uh, fingering uh, unmatched with the, um, with the dynamics, basically. So I can do something like that. Uh, passing from, from a, a very low dynamic to high dynamic, in a continuous way, but uh, independently from the fingering that I'm doing. Uh, usually with sample library, uh, since uh, uh, often, yes, I have to say, the dynamics is um, uh, controlled by the velocity of the note. In this case, the velocity is, uh, uh, is used to make uh, the uh, transition time between note when they are um, when I play legato. So legato uh, to play legato, I, I don't have a, an articulation to select, but uh, it, it is enough that I overlap or connect to two notes. So. <laughs> If I use a low velocity, I can, I can um, make portamento, so a slide between notes. If I use a high velocity, uh, it's a, a legato. And this is <laughs> a very quick overview for, for the saxophone. And um, I can select also uh, an alto flute, for example. Uh, in this case, uh, there is uh, much more uh, physical modeling uh, in this engine because we have sampled just uh, the very uh, first octa lower octave and the very uh, lowest dynamics. As in the real life, uh, in a flute, if you need to, um, to perform uh, and high, higher octave, you have to blow harder, simply. And uh, we have done the same. So we have uh, sampled the 
basic octave and uh, uh, obtain the higher notes and higher dynamics with the physical modeling concepts. So, this note is uh, used, this G, higher G, is using the same samples as the, the lower one, but using physical modeling, I can, uh, um, I can obtain just the harmonics that uh, give me the higher octave, <laughs> like in the real, in the real pipe uh, of the flute. Again, here I can, uh, I can use a hover blow, for example. Depending on the octave uh, or portion of the pipe, um, I play the note, uh, the overblow note will be one octave higher or one octave and a fifth higher and so on. Uh, because it um, exploits the, the harmonic series in a, in a pipe. Uh, because this derive from the physical modeling uh, concepts. <laughs> Stefano is follow us. <laughs> Hi Stefano. Yes, overtones. <laughs> so uh, I can show you just briefly this schema <laughs> that uh, uh, is the schema that realized this SWAM engine. Uh, we have a MIDI processor that process MIDI, MIDI events and uh, provides signals to the other um, elements of the of, of the engine, the the main the, the core of the engine, of course, is the multivector wavetable. Uh, we have some dynamic filters that uh, allows, for example, to um, to create overblown overtones, sorry, uh, and so on. We have modulators for vibrato, flutter, and growl effects. Um, we have some sample for the key noise and breath noise, and we have a, an algorithm that uh, we call in, in behavioral interactions. Uh, so, basically, other than building an instrument, uh, what uh, we do is to uh, create also some algorithm that help the let's let's call MIDI musician. Uh, to perform like uh, a, a real musician. So a real musician has uh, uh, some uh, unconscious um, reaction with the instrument that make it lively, that make it more, more realistic. So we implement such algorithms to, uh, to create uh, um, such nuances that gives more, more, realis more realism to the instrument. We have also modal resonances uh, modeling and a final convolutor that uh, allows to create a, a different, uh, uh, let's say, spectrum shapes for, for different um, instruments. Um, and a final uh, stage for compressor, reverb, and so on. This is just a, a final one. So, uh, I see there is a, a, a question from Emil. I have problems to set a CC to velocity. Is this even possible? And as a side, which perf controller are you using? So I, I start with the second question. Uh, this perf controller is from Tech Control, is uh, the, the basic one, uh, MIDI USB uh, breath controller. Uh, it just breath. There is another model that uh, has also byte sensor, a tilt and node, uh, but I prefer this one. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's not possible to set uh, CC to velocity for, uh, on our instrument, but it's possible to set a CC uh, to, um, to the portamento time. 
So in our, I can show also here. So in our instruments, it's possible to map uh, the portamento time here uh, to a given CC. And on the main window, it is necessary to select CC for the transition time. This way, you can control the portamento time between nodes using a CC and not the velocity. I hope uh, I have replied <laughs> to, to the question. So this, this was the, the first uh, technology sample based, but anyway with the uh, concept of physical modeling. Well, this is great. Um, you have a few more, a few videos that are on your website that I, I think uh, would be would be interesting to show. Uh, if I if I might yeah. share more, sh share one of those. Uh, so, which one do you want to, to show now? Do you have a preference? Uh, there is a video for a saxophone. So it explains. Uh, so there is Stefano playing uh, a saxophone, and he also ex explains a bit about our technology. All right, let, let's let's watch this. As you can see, Stefano is the master of the expression pedal. <laughs> so uh, I prefer to use this because I'm, I'm not so good in using the expression pedal to control the dynamics. But uh, Stefano is very good. Uh, also, it's much more, uh, much good than, than me in playing. So. <laughs> so when talking about control, there's so many parameters like if if I understand correctly, the, the hybrid approach you have to to physical models is that you have uh, this three dimensional collection of short, very short samples, and as you play and control, you go through different um, uh, different parts of the of, of the sound to express uh, the different kind of nuances and, and expressions. So it, it lends itself really well to expressive controllers. And you know, in, in the in the in the past ten years, so many of them have 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 seen, um, uh, have developed. I mean, I, I used to work at Rolly, so uh, I, I was I was really uh, in, in, into one of one of those. Before that, there was the hack and continuum, and there's, there's plenty of others. Uh, so I, I suppose th these have come to the exact right time. And for, for you, it must have been uh, amazing to be able to control everything directly from one keyboard, as opposed to having like a pedal, a brass controller. But what do people prefer and uh, uh, in general? So uh, yes, in the last uh, years we have we have seen a lot of uh, expressive controllers coming out, um, very very powerful and, uh, and th that allows uh, really uh, potentially a lot of much more control for, for the player. Uh, what uh, I have to say is that uh, if we think to the real thing, uh, almost, uh, I, I have to say, maybe all, but almost all expressive instruments like uh, winds uh, or also bow strings have uh, expression, the, the dynamic, the expression is disconnected from the fingering or from the pitch, usually. So in, in a saxophone, your breath, is uh, disconnected from your fingers. Uh, in a bow strings, your uh, bow 
uh, is disconnected from the left hand that is making the, the pitch on the string. So it's true that, for example, uh, expressive instrument like uh, the Rolly or uh, Continuum or the instrument allows you to have everything under your finger, but there is a, draw, a small drawback that the risk is that you control both the pitch and the, exp the, the expression, the dynamic, with the same finger. So you, you have to, to be more careful about how you control the sound. So it, they are uh, really good um, surface, but they also expose a, a new risk of uh, uh, missing the realism. You know? Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I understand uh, completely. And uh, and uh, th there is actually a question by Benjamin. It's a bit long, so I'm, I'm going to paraphrase. But essentially, is okay. is asking you know if if there would be interest in designing instruments uh, with MIDI instruments or electronic instruments with the shape of the instrument that you're you're reproducing, so that you have as as close as possible to to the real thing, uh, which would have a lot of interest for people with a limited range of motion. You know, like there are musicians with disabilities uh, or, or people with who breathing is a, is a problem. For example, so a saxophone is out of reach, yeah. but if you had um, everything but the breath and you replace this with a pedal, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Who, the, what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, 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 I think that MIDI allows uh, any, any of us to to play a sound, uh, an instrument, through a different uh, physical interface, you know? So you can become a master of a saxophone playing on, on, a, key, on a regular keyboard, keyboard or, or at the same time uh, become a, a master of a violin uh, playing on, uh, on a seaboard or, or on a wind controller, you know? So MIDI opens this uh, possibility to play the same instrument, physical uh, uh, simulation of a physical, in, uh, a real instrument, using a different uh, human to uh, computer interface, let's say. And this, uh, as you said, uh, opens also the possibility to people with disabilities to play such sounds with a totally different uh, uh, interface. Uh, the, um, what we have to do as developers is to uh, try to, um, to interpret the MIDI signal coming to the engine and uh, uh, make them uh, uh, as much as possible um, convert them as much as possible to, to play something that is realistic, you know? Avoid uh, paradoxes, for example, uh, or something like that. So that uh, when you play, it's natural to feel the, the reaction of the instrument. Yeah, and I suppose um, uh, Simone, who is behind the audio modeling handle here and is completing this by... Uh, suggesting to start thinking musically like a saxophone player or strings player is the first step. Um, yeah, and I, I, I've seen it. I've seen it in musicians playing with a seaboard, you know, um, really trying to, to rephrase something very specific, like a, a particular saxophone solo and starting there to, to really get the, uh, what's unique. And the gesture on, on the keyboard or any other instrument does change. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question, uh, a bit of a different question, which is how how do you benchmark uh, the real acoustic instrument w when you you know when you, when you work at developing the solution? How, how do you mm. test? I, well, I was about to, to say uh, uh, to to tell our uh, way of of uh, working of making th this instrument. Uh, basically, there are two approaches. Uh, a pure, let's say, academic approach that uh, you, using uh, math uh, you compare something that is real with, with, with the, the thing that you are building. 
So, for example, you can measure uh, the variance of a, a given a, a index uh, or a spectrum uh, variation or a centroid or something like that and uh, um, act on the variable or variables of the model to get close to that result. So this is more a scientific approach. Uh, we have this approach, let's say, during the, um, uh, during the um, design of the structure of the instrument. But then, uh, here I have to say, Stefano is this uh, beautiful mind that I, <laughs> I said before, uh, is comparing by ear the result, and 99% uh, of the time he understands what is the variable to touch <laughs> to get close to the final result. So, this uh, is incredible. Yeah, yeah, this is incredible. I, I was wondering if you had, and, and it's, it's probably it is a question you, you, you heard already, uh, but if you were doing something similar to the Pepsi test, you know, the, the, the campaign that yeah. Pepsi uh, did. Uh, where people w w would try a Coca-Cola and a Pepsi and, yeah. and, and know which is which. And in your case, it would be like, is it a real instrument or is it one of ours? Uh, yes, have you a, done a, it? A blind, a blind test. I, uh, we didn't done personally, but I know some forums uh, have done. And uh, if I remember well, there were several uh, people that believed that our instrument were the real thing. Uh, but other people that uh, understood that were, were not. Of course, it depends uh, a lot of uh, how you play or how you pro program the, the MIDI uh, data. Because you, as in the real instrument, you can make a, a totally uh, bad sounding uh, um, result, or if you are a good programmer, a good composer, a good uh, performer, you can get a, a, a very realistic thing. So one, one of the, the stories that I can tell <laughs> is to understand the physics of the instrument, uh, Stefano uh, watch, watched a lot of beginners playing because beginners uh, do not have the uh, maturity to uh, compensate the, the wildness of, of the instrument, you know. Uh, to become a, a good violin player, you need uh, a lot, several years, but in the beginning you obtain whistles, you obtain a scratching sound and something like that because you are, not, you are not mastering the instrument, you are not mastering your gesture. And so, uh, the instrument shows his real uh, behavior. Without the compensation of the, of the professional player, you can hear uh, the harmonics that really comes from the instrument and that maybe the, the professional player knows how to avoid some, um, some kind of sounds coming from, from the instrument. You know what I mean. Yeah. So if you listen to beginners, you, you say, ah, so there is a fifth there that comes out. Wow, why is there, is there a, a fifth, for example? Maybe because the length of the string or the node of the wave is... is uh, uh, in, in opposite in phase, for example, I don't know, I, I'm saying something randomly, but uh, that, that one, one trick that <laughs> Stefano yeah. used for understanding the, the real behavior of a, an instrument. That's very clever, and I, I must admit that I, I, I probably would fail as a blind test, uh, you know, especially if Stefano plays it, I, I don't think I could, <laughs> I could distinguish uh, uh, you know, an instrument player from from, from a swarm instrument, um, which which leads me to another question. There's, you know, for the past thirty years, ever since MIDI was invented and and, and computers starting to, to to create 
and uh, allow people to, to have an orchestra at their fingertip. Even though it was really bad 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it, it was pretty bad. You, you would recognize it. But ever since, there has been a debate uh, or anxiety for musicians feeling, well, am I going to be needed? You know, do I really need to learn the clarinet today if, if you know, if, if all this technique, you know, can be mastered with just like a few, a few controls. Um, what, what do you have to say to those musicians? I mean, I'm sure you don't want to put them out of a job, but, uh, but what, what do you think about that debate? Uh, firstly, I, I can say that uh, uh, we cannot avoid this. And uh, but because, you know, uh, sample library already, uh, already, can steal the job. So uh, we prefer to make instruments than recordings, because this is the, the truth. A sample library is a recording of another, in, uh, another player that plays an instrument, and you replace a potential player with such a recording. Uh, our instruments are playable in real time, so you can still have someone that plays them, maybe using an EWI or a wind controller. So I, I'm, th there is still a player needed there. Also, I have to say that uh, um, we have, uh, for example, Dino Soldo, that is a saxophone player for uh, Lionel Richie, that on, on stage, of course, it plays saxophone and it plays a real saxophone. But maybe for one, just one song, he needs a bassoon or a clarinet. So uh, instead of having maybe a, a backing track recorded, uh, it's better to have a, a player that already knows how to play a saxophone. So maybe using an AWI uh, with the saxophone fingering, just plays a, a phrase of clarinet or a flute or bassoon. And there is also another, another uh, thing that I, I, can, I can think, and I remember Stefano all, all, always mentioned, is that uh, if you make a, 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 a demo of, a, of a, a new song, for example, and you want to, to, to give this demo to a producer to listen to it, and you use a um, a bad sounding saxophone, uh, maybe a, a sample library that is not realistic in, in, during legatos and so on, the producer can say, mm, it's better not having a saxophone in this, in this song. Maybe let's use a, a Moog <laughs> for the solo. <laughs> if you have a, a, a saxophone that behaves like a saxophone, Maybe you can hire a saxophonist to play that, that piece, you know? Yeah, that's a great point. I think that it opens the possibilities for a, any, anyone, any, anyone producing music in their bedroom and, and we can't afford to hire a professional saxophonist to, 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 uh, well, to, to still create something very interesting. And yes. on, on that, can I suggest that we, we listen to one of your um, solo strings? Yeah, or, or trumpet. I have to which, say, which one yeah. do you want to? Uh, um, I, I, I want at, at this point. I want to say that uh, we we have made all the woodwinds, uh, uh, not all, of course, but we we were about to say, okay, we want to make solo strings. So we had the chance to 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 choose if continue on using the swarm technology with samples or jumping <laughs> uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, go to a, top, a pure physical model approach. And uh, we, chosen, we have chosen to, uh, to go for a physical, pure physical modeling. So after the, the woodwinds, uh, Stefano and myself, uh, uh, we decided to, to, to go for the physical model, physical modeling, and we didn't have any real knowledge, as you, as you have said. So we have studied, we have uh, make, made a first prototype, we changed mind a few times because uh, 
it, it was hard at the, at the beginning, but then after the hard work, uh, we, we started uh, um, listening to, to something that was about to, to have a, a realistic sound and we, we, we decided, okay, we, we, we can make a real product using the phys physical modeling approach. So we can listen to the, maybe the solo strings um, demo and then yeah. I, can, I can go on. Great. Okay, so the solo strings demo is coming up. We're going to put that full screen and listen to it. the main mechanical variables in real time, low position, speed and pressure, position of the finger on the string, even simultaneously. For example, you can combine a more or less rapid portamento during a crescendo or a diminuendo while we are playing a tremolo. There is indeed no limit to the number of possible combinations. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so uh, today is <laughs> still uh, amazing for me that I have programmed, uh, I have helped uh, Stefan in programming the model to, to listen to, to such fidelity of, of uh, a physical model. If you consider that uh, is, uh, there are no samples and uh, all is coming from basically math equations or anyway uh, elements combined together that, um, uh, that are not based on, on, on a, uh, a source of um, oscillation or, or, uh, uh, or samples. So, because uh, rem remember that uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Chris, for, for your thank comment. You, I think I think that would make a, make the team very happy. Just to, su to summarize the um, uh, what physical model modeling is, uh, the sound is not generated by an oscillator or by something that is pre-recorded. Uh, physical modeling is uh, making the condition on a simulation of a mechanical system. So making the con condition to generate that sound. The input of the, the model are just uh, um, um, variable that uh, uh, are um, slowly changing compared to the sound. So for example, the bow speed or uh, the, the, the finger position, the bow position, uh, are just, uh, yes, you are listening to a question. Thank you, <laughs> Stefano. <laughs> uh, are just the input to the system and the system, thanks to such inputs, uh, have the, has the conditions to generate the sound. So we are not producing the sound directly, but we are making the condition to create, to generate the sound. And yeah. in, 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 Sorry, in, nat yeah, okay. in nature, this is often uh, 
connected to a concept like uh, uh, thresholds, uh, balance between forces, uh, and so on. For example, on, on a bow string, you have the bow that uh, scratch uh, the string, and uh, there is a, a well-known phenomenon that is a, a slip stick. So the, the, the bow stick on the string uh, and, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, it is glued together with the string until the tension is so high that it slips. So in this movement of slip, uh, uh, stick and slip, stick and slip, stick and slip, uh, the sound is, is generated, the, 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 the string starts vibrating. And it's not simple to have such vibration um, sustained. Uh, this vibration sustained is called uh, uh, Helmholtz uh, motion. So it's mm -hmm. uh, a very, very uh, subtle uh, balance between uh, forces, between the, uh, the, the bow, the rosin on the bow and the string uh, uh, movement that happens only on a given uh, equilibrium, you know? So a bit more or a bit less can generate a sound horrible or can, not, or, or, uh, can avoid to generate a sound. So you have to find the right balance. And that's why a violin player makes years, it takes years to, to learn how to play uh, a violin, for example. So it looks like it's much faster to, to, to learn how to program them than to play them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you, 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 with the two of you, you've, you've programmed almost the entire orchestra. So, um, yes. in a few years, uh, Gennaro is is asking a, a question which relates to to what you're saying. Uh, how many iterations you went through before you found a version you were happy with, and what the process was like, and how do you prototype new features? Uh, it's a, a long a, a question that requires <laughs> a long explanation. Uh, anyway. Uh, take into account that for the first uh, viola, the, the first bow string that we released was the viola. And uh, uh, the viola came out to the public after more than two years of, of uh, studying and, and prototyping and work and, and rework. As I said, uh, after probably six, eight months, um, we, we, we started thinking about uh, using a different technique. So we worked for about three months, if I'm not wrong, Stefano, maybe you can write uh, in the chat, uh, on another approach that we called the uh, uh, geometrical approach. Uh, because um, at the beginning, as I said, it was really hard to make a good sound from a, uh, um, a physical model. So, we thought, why we don't build the waveform using geometric, uh, uh, geometric, uh, I don't know, collage, let, let's say. I don't, I don't have the, the right word to say. But uh, so we spent uh, three months on another approach, totally different approach. And then we went back because we didn't find uh, a good solution. So we went back to the physical modeling. Uh, how many iterations? Um, until our ear says, okay, <laughs> that's the, the, the answer. Well, so uh, you, you, you have started working together 11 years ago. So another metric for, for that is uh, how many instruments have you released in, in these 11 years? In 11 years, we released 33 instruments uh, based on four different technologies. Let's say two are similar technologies that swam uh, for the saxophone, for the reeds. So saxophone, clarinets, and double reeds have the same base, base model, basic model. Then the flutes, as I said, uh, is a, a bit different because we just sampled the first octave. So these are, are, are different, 
are the same technology declined in, in two different ways. Then we, we worked on Bowet strings uh, and uh, finally on the brass. Uh, solo strings are based uh, on uh, a model that I, I can show maybe um, a bit the, the, the schema here. So uh, I, I don't know how deep I can go <laughs> now, but uh, basically we, we use the, um, we start from, this is the Carpustron um, schema, maybe many of you know this, uh, is basically a, a loop where uh, we have an exciter, a delay line that is proportional to basically the, the string tuning of the, the pitch of the string. There is a dispersion filter and uh, a feedback amount. So if, I, if we feed this, this um, uh, uh, system with uh, uh, an excitation, uh, it uh, loops in, in, in this infinite loop until the dispersion filter basically uh, 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 make, make the signal disappear. Okay. Uh, so this is the very basic uh, uh, emulation of, of our resonance string. So we applied the, this uh, resonance string to a more complex uh, model that is um, that we, we found, uh, of course, uh, from the uh, Stanford University models, and uh, we applied uh, some modification to, to what we found in literature. Uh, for example, the, the main, uh, the, the main uh, uh, change that we made is on the interaction between the string uh, velocity, the, the, let's say the, the bow and the string, which is the differential uh, velocity between the bow and the string. <laughs> uh, so this uh, interaction, this friction, is totally dynamic and depends on many variables, including something related to uh, thermodynamics. Because if you think uh, that the contact point between the bow and the string is very thin, and uh, uh, it ver the, the temperature vary, varies very, uh, fa very quickly uh, from during the, the slip and the stick uh, status, as I said before. So, um, the, we, Stefano especially worked a lot on, on this model of, of the interaction. Um, and I, I have to say at least 50% uh, of the realism is given by, by this model of, of, the, of the friction between the bow and the string. So th this is the main... Um, the main uh, re resonations, um, resonator uh, that models the strings. And uh, the output is uh, a model of a bridge and the body of the, of the bow strings that uh, uh, is simply uh, given by um, a convolution algorithm uh, where we uh, may an impulse response um, with, with some careful uh, processing to um, obtain a result that matches uh, the, the model that we have made. So um, it's not just a sample of, uh, of an impulse response of a body, but there is, uh, uh, <laughs> I cannot reveal s secrets, but there, there is some processing to, to make uh, the sound, uh, uh, the, the final sound more close, closer to the real thing, let's say. I don't know if there is some 
question about this? Uh, I don't see any questions specifically about about the model uh, for now, but uh, we do have another video uh, that well doesn't illustrate strings. Unless you want me to play uh, another another string video, uh, but I, I can play the. No, but I can uh, show um, here the the strings, uh, the violin, and I can I can show the. Yes, yeah, great. Of course, the, the GUI, and uh, so um, there are a lot of parameters that can be tweaked. I just make, a, I'm not a good player, so sorry. As you can see, I can I can uh, uh, the, the same uh, uh, behavior of the woodwinds has been applied here. So you just learn a way to play. So yeah, also in this case, the velocity of the the second note, if I play legato, controls the portamento time, so the glissando between two notes, if the velocity is low. So is if I press gently the second note, or it's a true legato. So. I can uh, control the portamento time through velocity. Of course, it's possible to control the portamento time through a, a MIDI uh, control change message also, as, as we have seen in uh, for the woodwinds. Uh, there are a lot of parameters, so we can control bow pressure, so starting from a flautando uh, sound until a, a scratchy sound. Like <laughs> Sounds like scratchy. me playing. <laughs> Probably also <laughs> I'll do the same. And uh, we can vary the bow position. The difference is very subtle, but uh, you can hear a variation in, it's, it's like a, a variation in the format of, of, the, um, of the sound. Uh, we can control of also the amount of rosin on the string. Also, in this case, I don't know if it's audible because it's very subtle, but... Oops. Uh. It's very subtle, there is a... a like... <laughs> at the beginning. Uh, we can control the open strings amount, uh, uh, the bow noise of the, of the bow. This is incredibly uh, precise. Yeah, you can uh, but, but uh, play harmonics. If you don't know the instrument, it, it must be pretty difficult to get to uh, to play them correctly, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, I have to say, if you want to play just out of the box, uh, you can have already a, 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 a good performing instrument. But if you are a composer that you want to go to the tails, so act on, uh, on uh, very um, um, deeply on, on the parameter, you can obtain really almost infinite combinations of, uh, of violins. It's, this is not one violin. This is I don't know, thousand violins, you know? So one of the things that I, I, I want to say is that uh, uh, if you have a sample library, you have sampled one violin, that violin. Yes. But in this case, you have many violins because you can change body, you can change uh, uh, the behavior, the reaction of the instruments, of the instruments. So 
I understand. Is, the, 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 there is a question from Benjamin uh, Williams. Thanks, Benjamin, for this. Uh, it's a bit long again, but uh, it resonates with, with some things I've heard Stefano say in the past about um, why you chose to do solo instruments as opposed to, to big ones. I mean, the question is, is a bit different, but uh, I, th I thought you might have um, yeah, because, something to uh, say about this. Yeah, yeah, I have to say. To make uh, many instruments, you have to start from one instrument. So uh, this is just the first step. Indeed, uh, we have planned in the next year, probably, uh, to release uh, an ensemble of instruments. So uh, we will make ensembles of all our collection. So there will be uh, bow string ensembles, uh, woodwinds ensembles, and so on. So, you can, with one uh, note, you, have, uh, uh, you will have maybe six players playing together, uh, so controlling a section of uh, musicians, playing the same note, of course, but anyway, in a section. Right, right. Um, there is another question. I'm not quite sure I understand, but if I'm Antonio... Um, if if you have, well, I, I suppose the question is: Have you considered making new sounds, mm -hmm. sounds that are uh, y using the model you have, to that that sound not non realistic? Yeah, yeah. Well, th this question has been asked many times. <laughs> so we started the uh, the, the first um, uh, challenge that we have to to that, that we have it was to create something that was realistic. Because it's, it's more difficult to create something that sounds realistic than something that sounds unrealistic. Because you have the fantasy of creating anything you want if you don't have uh, um, a, a means of, of compar comparison, you know? So it's more difficult to have something realistic that you, you have to compare to. But the... the the answer is yes. After we will release uh, the ensemble, we will focus on also on probably we will focus on uh, um, a synthesizer that uh, will have the feeling of an acoustic instrument, but creating new sounds. So you can maybe combine a bow with uh, a, a, a pipe or a, a breath. Uh, um, a string that uh, is uh, is blowed, <laughs> for example, I don't know, or uh, um, a pipe uh, three meters long, uh, long, uh, or I don't know, ten meter. I don't know. Anyway. Right, right. But that sounds super interesting. Interesting. I, I have um, I have a final question, and uh, because I think we I think we should wrap up shortly, yeah. um, which is about MIDI 2.0. I, I know you've been involved. Uh, in some ways, you demonstrated your instruments uh, two years ago at NAM when the first specifications uh, started to be, to be um, uh, implementable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm curious what, what MIDI 2.0 can change for you. And, and also thinking of, of the people who are listening, what could it change for them? Yeah, I. so other than our instrument, we have a, a platform... Uh, that is called Camelot. That uh, it, the, it was the application that I use for showing our instrument now. It is one Camelot. Uh, so two years ago, we had the uh, first prototype of Camelot uh, integrated with uh, the first prototype of a montage Yamaha montage uh, having MIDI 2.0. Uh, that was the very beginning, and. Uh, um, so, what MIDI 2.0 will offer to the final user will be, okay, it, it will be more, uh, higher resolution for the controllers and so on, but this is not the main uh, feature. Uh, I, I think that the main feature will be uh, more integration and also uh, um, more uh, controls for the physical modeled instrument because 
we will have uh, uh, on the not on, for example, we will have more information and not just velocity. So, for example, you will have expression and other controllers also at the beginning of the node that we can use to drive the model and make uh, the model sounding um, much, much better because now we have to make some tricks because we have not enough information at the beginning, you know? So this, right. This uh, and, and especially, you know, when you talk about the rate of information, MIDI 2.0 is, is like 3D uh, and, and MIDI, MIDI 1.0 is like 2D. It's like the, the, it, it changes by, by a, a certain order of magnitude. And yeah. you will have a lot more information. So I suppose also for Camelot, which is going to be a central place to organize all of your MIDI instruments, MIDI 1.0, MIDI 2.0, they can all talk together. But for, for your instruments, do you, do you for, for your software instrument, do you think MIDI 2.0 is going to, to change things and, and open possibilities for, for, for you? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I have to say it will be uh, an um, ecosystem of things because it's not just that uh, making a new software instrument that applies to MIDI 2.0 specification is also having uh, physical controllers, those and all the other software that um, are connected to our instrument to, to talk to each other. Uh, MIDI 2.0 will work well if all the ecosystem will be 2.0. You know what I mean? Yes. So if you can uh, exploit the new, uh, the new feature offered by MIDI 2.0, so more controls, more uh, information, more channels, and so on, you can, um, you, you really can have uh, something new or something uh, good for the, the user. Yeah, I understand. Well, and perhaps uh, we, we can uh, end this session with, with a, uh, a philosophical mm -hmm. reflection from Malocchio. Thank you, Malocchio. Mm -hmm. um, who uh, reminds us that, you know, the, the first instruments were produced to mimic the human voice. It's true. And, and then, you know, we started creating instruments that sounded completely different. I mean, that, that, that's, that was the question you answered before. And now we create mm -hmm. instruments that sound more like acoustic and real instruments. Um, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on this? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the, the human voice is the hardest, uh, the hardest instrument to, to, that can be uh, synthesized <laughs> and controlled because we can control it because our system is here and connected to the brain. But how can you control a speech uh, in real time while playing on, on a given <laughs> surface. It's very difficult, but we can uh, get uh, closer to, to, to that if uh, the technology allows us uh, to... Um, it will become much more sophisticated and much more uh, integrated and maybe with some uh, AI to... Uh, maybe to, to get closer to the human voice or maybe learn from the human voice and create something totally different but anyway complex uh, but beautiful yeah yeah well I mean I, I don't know if, if I, I would desire personally to, to, to have a tool that allowed to, to mimic any voice apart maybe from having your uh, Italian accent, which I think is, is fantastic, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's an interesting uh, loop and, and circle of, of like what what we get inspired by and and drives innovation, uh, and there's also demand. I mean, people will want to have an instrument that sounds exactly like like a flute, like a bassoon, because they can't afford to to buy one, maybe or. They can't afford to, 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 to play with one. They don't know a player. So th mm -hmm. there's, always, there's going to be a demand for that uh, as well. So, um, yeah, it's... it's yeah. Uh, also, it opens... Uh, I see that uh, it's more an addition 
then um, in addition to the expressivity of the musician, then stealing you know, a job for, of a real musician. Because uh, maybe a plan, piano player uh, often desires to have the same uh, expressivity as a, a wind instrument or as a, a bowed string instrument, and he cannot. But now with the technology and with such uh, model of instrument, it's possible. So right, with, right. Uh, with a very, you, you have a learning curve to, to, to apply, but uh, it's, it's small, smaller compared to a learn a new instrument, <laughs> real instrument. For sure. So I will bring the trumpet uh, because I, th I think it's also yeah. a super interesting one and to close uh, this and uh, thank everybody who uh, asked question and joined us today, especially Stefano and, uh, and Pat Scandalis, who also has been uh, on, on the same journey and also helping you guys. And, and, and I know you, you guys work together. So it's a small yeah. world, the physical models, uh, inviting anyone who wants to, to, um, to, you know, to, to work on this, understand it more. There are resources uh, at Karma uh, and publications on a subject. And it's um, a lot of credit to, to Stefano and Emanuele for figuring it out without doing a PhD in, in, in the subject. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and I think it's, it's great. Like, you know, it's, it's a great testament to when you motivate it by a vision that, that you, can, you can do truly wonderful things. So let's, yeah, let's and, hear, sorry, go on. Yeah, I, let me just uh, say one thing that uh, the solo brass instruments are the first uh, product that we have made uh, as a company, as audio modeling, because all the other instruments were made by Stefano and myself. And then we decided to, to start uh, audio modeling three years ago. And then some uh, um, employees uh, were hired. And now we are a team. And the solo brass are the result of, of this team that worked together. So, and I'm very proud and ha happy about this team because he's really motivated. And uh, I can say anybody with the curiosity, with the dedication can uh, make something similar. Great. And uh, Emil is asking about the different UIs. Uh, and uh, I think that could be the last question we take. Uh, yeah, and, okay. I, and I think you, you answered partly this saying that this is the first uh, product that you made with the entire team. So the UI has changed as well as a result of bringing more people in. Exactly. Also because uh, uh, Simone Capitani, that is uh, the, the third uh, business mate in the company, uh, is uh, our also our UX designer. Is it was a UX designer also for Rolly when uh, you he worked with you, and, and uh, well. he he brought uh, the um, uh, this knowledge and we applied the, the UX design to the new uh, UI, and this will be. Uh, the UI that we, are, we will apply also to the solo strings and uh, uh, solo woodwinds uh, in a few months. So in a few months, we will uh, apply this new um, framework and UI and UX to the, to the other instruments. And for, for people who are not actively developing plugins, UI means user interface. So that's yeah. that's that's what it looks like. And <laughs> clearly, uh, you you've seen the the video of the violin before, or the interface of the plugin with the violin before. Now this trumpet feels and looks very different. Looks much more modern. And uh, we're going to have a, a quick look. And uh, and that's it. So I'm just going to play it and say goodbye uh, as. Uh, at this place. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lele, for this great uh, interview. Thank you, JB. Thank you, everybody.
The trombe swam, sono su swam trumpets are realized with physical modeling. This technology allows all the typical articulations of this instrument to be reproduced in real time by acting on its main physical elements such as pipe length, breath pressure and lip tension. Independent control of the valves allows both half valve transitions and ones typically triggered with overtones in glissandos or broad vibratos. For example, it is possible to morph a classic vibrato into a more jazz-like one until it turns into the so-called vibrato shake. 